Hello, and welcome to Middlebury Edition. I'm Middlebury, Edition, uh, Middlebury Representative Robin Shai, your host for the program. Middlebury Edition was created primarily for the purpose of educating folks about local services and the Vermont legislature, and to provide an opportunity for area nonprofit organizations to talk about their work. Today's guests are Kristen Bolton, Assistant Director at Elderly Services. And with Kristen is Marion Werner, who has a long history at Elderly Services as an employee, a volunteer, and now a program participant. Founded in 1981, Elderly Services' original purpose was to offer elders and their families an adult daycare center to help delay or prevent nursing home placement. They have since added a wonderful array of services in pursuit of their mission to provide creative, high quality programs to help elders live safe and satisfying lives in their own homes and communities. It's really quite amazing to see all that Elderly Services has to offer, and I hope we'll get to talk about a lot of these services today. Welcome, Kristen and Marion. Thank you, Robin. Yeah, that's great. Great to have you on the show. And, and uh, I learned a lot just looking at your website, so I'm really excited to hear more about what you're, what you're up to. So Kristen, let's start with you and the Elderly Services Organization. Um, what are some of the programs and offerings Elderly Services provides, and whom do you serve? Thank you, Robin, and thank you for your interest in our program. I feel like uh, we're sometimes the best kept secret in Addison County. People who know who we are think it's wonderful what we do, and other people drive by our building and wonder what it is. Uh, is it an inn, or you know, what's what happens there? Mm -hmm. uh, our our more familiar name is Project Independence, and that is our adult day health program. Um, but we also offer other services. So um, people sometimes refer to us as Project Independence or Project or Elderly Services or ESI. So we have many names in the community and I wanna talk a little bit about what we do and I'll just share some pictures because I think that tells a, a pretty good story of what happens here. Yeah. Um, so I will share my screen and great. I just walked through some pictures. So this is our beautiful building on Exchange Street. Uh, it was built about 16 years ago uh, with a lot of help from our community members. And we wanted it to look like a home away from home. So it's got that big house, little house, back house, barn feel to it. Um, and it's, it's quite lovely inside. Yeah, it's beautiful. And what we offer, as I mentioned, our adult day center. We also have a lifelong learning center. Um, with classes for anyone over 65. We offer elder care counseling. So families might call us and say, oh, I'm, mom or dad is having a hard time at home right now. Can, what, what are our options? What can we do? Mm -hmm. And we also evaluate older people in terms of what do they need at this point in their life? We offer counseling and we also are um, an education center and advocacy center for older people. Most people think of of the many isms, they don't even realize ageism is a, a serious factor in people's health and in people's mental health. And so our part of our programming goal is to just fight that and create a really exciting, vibrant um, place for people to be in the last years of their lives, whether it's the last you know, 45 years of their lives or the last five years of their lives. Before the pandemic, um, we had about 225 participants at our adult day program, um, over 250 students with our lifelong learning program every year. And we've been offering caregiver support and counseling and this kind of engagement and advocacy. So of course, then the pandemic was a serious threat to our program. Oh, well, before I get there, um, what we do here, this is a kind of a typical day at our, our old program when we could um, be in person without masks, we would have bands come and play music. We would go out on band trips into the community. We'd be singing all the time, conversation, volunteers come in doing art. Um, the feeling was a home away from home for our uh, project independence program. So just let me interrupt you for a second, Chris. Yeah. Is that, is that a five day a week or a seven day a week program? Uh, it was six days a week. Now it's five days a week, okay. Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, okay. And uh, we try to give caregivers a break. So we, yeah. that's the extended hours on our previously Saturday uh, opening. Yeah. Okay. So these are just some pictures that show what we're up to. Um, we celebrate the beauty of age. 
We have a lot of fun. This is our wiffle ball net outside. A lot of dancing inside with live music. Um, people who hadn't danced in years just getting up and having a good time. People make new friends even in their 80s. These two ladies loved playing Scrabble together. And then also just a way to bring the whole family in, whether it's um, helping each other in caregiving settings or just this granddaughter playing for her grandpa. Well, that's great. So visitors can come to Project Independence when yes, they're around. Yes, we have. We, before the pandemic, we'd have about 500 volunteers a year just coming through, whether it was a class from Mary Hogan or um, a group of accordion players or um, a Girl Scout or a Boy Scout troop or the hospice singers, Wellspring mm -hmm. singers. So yeah. we just really had open doors and a very permeable membrane out to the community. Yeah. Um, that is, continues to be very important to us by challenging now with safety issues. Sure, of course. So of course. one of our goals is for families to have loving relationships. It can be hard if mom's moved in with you and you're taking care of her. Um, so creating space so mom can come here um, makes it easier at home. And we also provide counseling when there's things that come up. And then uh, this was going out to the um, Memorial Day parade. I think we had a van that we decorated and you might see our vans driving around. So a lot of veterans in this, in this van um, celebrating. Looks like it. So you go out and pick people up. Yes, we do. And these are our uh, 14 passenger vans. And you'll see our, our Project Independence vans going to Bristol, to Virgins, to Brandon, um, to the western part of the county. Um, people can't drive mostly who come. Most Marion is um, an exception. Um, she does drive, but most people can no longer drive. And so if they don't stop, uh, if they stop driving, then they, um, they're pretty isolated at home. Sure, so, sure. And I didn't realize you you went so far um, afield from the actual building. So that's really great to know that, that you will pick people up in Brandon and the further yeah. out reaches of Addison County. Yeah, and a little bit into Northern Rutland County, a little bit into Southern Chittenden, depending on where people live and what they need and who's there. So yeah, we're, we're kind of like a school. And these are our little school buses going around um, picking people up. Yeah. No, that's great. And how, I think this is probably your most well-known program. And yes. how, did, how does it compare with say a retirement community or a nursing home? Well, uh, one big difference is that it is just a day program. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, people don't sleep overnight here. That's a common misconception. And um, that allows people to live with their families or maybe stay in their own home for longer if they have supervision during the day or maybe they we drop them off at night and there's a grandson or a, you know, a sister or something who's there to greet someone and help them. Um, so that's one difference is it's just the day during the day. And then another difference is it's a lot less expensive uh, in terms of the, the state and federal resources being allocated. We can take mm -hmm. care of people for much longer in an adult day health setting than a nursing home is quite expensive which right. makes sense because they have the staffing and the uh, medical supervision is just a higher cost. Um, sure. And that's better saved for people who are really, really in need of that. So yeah. um, we just have a, a very interesting role to play. And also uh, we tend to be more integrated into the community and nursing homes um, tend to just be more of a standalone situation. People can come in and out but the people who live there tend not to come in and out very much, but visitors can come in and out. Whereas our folks are going out to the community and then coming back to mm -hmm. us during the day. Mm -hmm. And do you have any kind of medical staff or nursing staff on, on hand during the day? We do, we have um, a nurse, an RN on duty from about nine to five or 10 to six every single day. And they can oversee medication, blood sugar, blood pressure, someone's yeah. not feeling well they call the doctor's office and say how should we proceed um, mm -hmm. they can help with follow-up in terms of someone was in the hospital is now in rehab and what did they need to help get back on their feet so there's a 
uh, collaboration with family and with medical practices and other um, support services in the community that we provide. And nurses are an integral part of that, as well as our social work staff. Yeah, great. Okay, thanks. Uh, yeah. Any more slides or can I ask Marion a couple questions? Yeah, so let me just say we've got homemade food and that's a big draw. <laughs> and we try to have fun. So those are some um, looks great pictures looks of, like of our place. Yes. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for sharing those. So Marion, yes. um, you have a long history at Elderly Services. You were um, working there. You were a volunteer. You were a program participant. How did you get interested in working uh, there in the first place? I started as a volunteer. I okay. was looking for some place to volunteer. <clears throat> and a couple of friends who worked here said, come to the project, you'll love it. So I applied and I was accepted. And I worked as a volunteer for seven months. And then Joanne, our director, called me and said, would you work more hours if we paid you? Well, you know, I like <laughs> money. So I worked three days and I did that for 10 years. Wow. Yeah. And what were you doing as an employee? What I was, was leading job? programs, um, mm -hmm. helping the people to the bathroom, whatever whatever was needed, showers, um, just being nice to people. And it's so easy to be nice to people here. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I wanna get this in and I've told many people that I've never worked at any place that is where everyone is nice. And ah. that's true here. I don't know how they find nice people, but everyone is nice. That's great. That, that says a lot about the organization. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah, that's great. And, and so you're still, uh, you were volunteering and now how did you end up joining as a participant? Well, it was hard. <laughs> First of all, <laughs> COVID came and that ended my work as a volunteer. Yeah, sure. And I sat home for a year and I went crazy because you'll find out I like to talk. <laughs> and there was no, I, I live alone in a condo. So. Uh -huh. I was there and then I gave up my car so I no longer could drive. So I asked Joanne if I could ride the van and pay her. And she said, no, you have to be a participant. So I didn't want to be a participant. But the more I thought about it, I thought it's your pride that's getting in the way. Mm -hmm. So I said, I called her up. I said, I will become a participant. And she immediately made space for me. Uh, you know, they were very welcoming. Uh -huh. So I've been a participant now for about five months, six months, something okay. since they opened again. And yeah. at first it was hard because I'd want to jump up and help people, but I couldn't because I had to be helped. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't sound like you need to old. <laughs> so anyway, I, I love it. I'm so glad I, I made the decision and I ride the van because I don't have a car anymore. No. Um, <clears throat> I don't use all their services, hopefully, not yet. <laughs> they are very good to me. I, I can't yeah. tell you how good they are to me. That's and, wonderful. And you've attended some of the elder college classes. Is that what they're called, yes, I, elder college classes? So what are those like? They're very good. You learn things which, you know, you can pick a topic. Like I, I took one that was on how to play the uh, recorder. I, ha I have no medical or musical background except singing in a chorus. And you know, any, any topic, there's one on aging that I took, but I turned out to be the oldest one there. So I was, helping, the class. <laughs> I was helping a teacher. <laughs> uh, <Aging> gracefully. <laughs> yes. Now they're on Zoom now and I don't really enjoy Zoom. Yeah. So I'm not taking any, well, now that I'm a participant, I don't have to take the older classes, but they're very good. Okay. I would recommend so you don't have to be a be a part of a participant in Project Independence to take an elder college yeah, class. Anybody, it's it's for anybody. Okay. And it's it's well attended. I as, as far as I've noticed, yeah. and well accepted. The speakers are excellent, and you can learn about so many things. Yeah, I wonder if maybe I'll ask Kristen. Do you, can you think of some of the other courses that the, the classes that are being taught? Topics. I, I remember a friend took one, but I think it was maybe it was about a book or something. I don't remember. There are book reviews. There's there's music. There's anything you can think of. Uh, probably Kristen could name off more than I could. Uh, but yeah, I would I'll, recommend. 
I'll give it a shot. And uh, it's usually, Marian is uh, someone who's experienced both, but often the people who come to our adult day program are not the folks who would necessarily want to take our elder college classes. Yeah. For example, there's a group that just started reading Moby Dick led mm -hmm. by a, a professor who formerly taught at Texas A&M. So that's, that's pretty, that's heavy lifting. Yeah. And they read um, James Joyce um, Ulysses earlier, and they're, they're kind of going for their bucket list on the serious literature. So that's, that's one picture. Marion uh, talked about the aging gracefully group. They tend to read a book about aging and have a discussion. So it's, um, it's more of got of a got a book group kind of a feel to it than more of an educational bent, but um, that's pretty neat. We had a Middlebury College professor talking about the historic geology of the Champlain Valley. Three sessions on that. We've got someone coming up talking about nuclear energy as mm. part of a you know what are kind of the pros and cons of that as we look towards a, a future with climate change in it, mm. and um, uh, we have. Robert Wyatt, a monthly give a program. He's, he's an amazing storyteller of musical stories and mm -hmm. he puts together these programs. Maybe he'll talk about Gilbert and Sullivan and he'll take clips and he'll talk about their biographies and he'll talk about their music. He was a Steinway artist, a uh, piano player for his professional life. And now in this kind of retirement, he puts together these amazing presentations. So. Caleb Kenna, you know, Vermont from above. Sure. So we, we try to look at the talent within our county, whether it's at the college or other experts and um, and just have see what they want to offer. And it, it's a very wonderful way for people who are very independent and active to engage with other like-minded folks. Um, yeah. And we've been on Zoom just because our building is really... Um, we're just trying to keep a very limited number of people in so we can keep our elders safe during the pandemic. Sure. Well, that makes uh -huh. sense. But yeah. we're, we are so lucky in this county with uh, Middlebury College and uh, so many people who've retired here and who have a variety of interests that I can imagine that the kinds of classes you offer are pretty limitless, just limited only by somebody's imagination and interest, so. Yes, we, are, we have an incredible county. I mean, the people in this county are amazing. Yeah. Very and generous. you have to be how how old do you have to be to take those classes? I think I said over sixty five, but I think it's truly over sixty. Um, yeah. Now that I, yeah, so okay. and if you're really excited and you're fifty eight, we probably would let you in. So. <laughs> That's good to know. That's good to know. So, um, Kristen, I can imagine someone saying, and I have to say, this starts to hit close to home here. I'm over sixty five uh, or sixty five, and active and independent. So is there something at elderly services for me? We've talked about the classes, but are there other things for someone in their 60s? Yeah, and it, um, so the, a lot of people use us for that connection, that community connection. Um, for some people over 65 means, oh, I'm starting to take care of my 90 something year old parents. And can mm -hmm. you help me figure out some of these problems? Mom and dad still living in their own home. Um, medical issues, maybe dementia developing, what do I do? So we can provide caregiver support. Some people looking for volunteer opportunities at that, you know, they're retiring and they kind of like Marion want a meaningful way to connect in the right. community. So um, as we get past the pandemic and can open our doors more widely, we're a great volunteer mm -hmm. community. I think because of what Marion said, everyone is just so kind. Um, and then if, people are feeling like, wow, this is a real crossroads in my life. I don't, I don't understand how to navigate this part of my life. Uh, we do offer counseling. Yeah. So we have licensed social workers um, who can oh, provide those services. So if people are feeling blue or lost or lonely or, and I think that happens as people get older too, especially if you're living alone. And I'm sure the pandemic was a really tough time for yeah. a lot of your participants. What? Yeah, Mary, and you, you, you mentioned that yourself. Yeah. That was the case. Yeah. yeah. You know, I was, one of the things I learned about, and it was because of a friend whose mother um, lived in another part of Vermont and had dementia. And I think she set up a time to meet with somebody at elderly services to talk about what the options were and how they should go about thinking about it. And, and, and you were also able to provide uh, resources that they could contact out of state and that sort of thing. So you help with that sort of research, is that right? 
Yes, we do. We have um, we have a really good um, collection of you know people who know about resources within Vermont, mm -hmm. and we also know ways to then connect with someone out of state if you need that. So our our rule of thumb is if you live in Vermont, you can call us. If your parents or loved ones that you're concerned about live in Vermont, but you live out of state, you can call us. But if you and your loved ones live out of state, then maybe we'll just give you the name of the agency on aging. <laughs> so we're willing to be pretty broad in our uh, ability to help, but we get a lot of those calls. I would say we probably get 10 to 15 calls a week just saying, what, what, what can I do? Yeah. You know, this is what's happening with mom or dad, or this is what's happening with my husband or wife or sister. Um, can you help? And it's everything from housing to medical issues to dementia to concerns about um, safety. So uh, we do pro provide those supports. Yeah, yeah. It, it's amazing to me all the things that you do. Um, and it, it's we're very lucky that you're you exist and that you're here in Middlebury, I think. And so you have funding is both from federal and state. Is that Mm -hmm. And of course, donations, we know, we know that, but, um, but you also get funding that way. Yeah, we, we are a fee. We charge a fee for people to attend our adult day program. So that generates um, two thirds to three quarters of our income. And most of that can be, we, we really help people find funding for that if they're eligible. We're very committed to helping families find that. And it's mm -hmm. not you kind of need a master's degree sometimes to navigate the systems once you get older. And that's another right. reason people call us is I can't figure out how to fill out this form. Can you help? And we do. Um, so uh, some people pay privately. We have to um, charge the same amount that we get reimbursed by Medicaid. So that's mm -hmm. around $17 an hour right now, um, which includes, you know, food and, the RN supervision and yeah. a lot of uh, social engagement. Right. And has that number changed much in the last few years? It just has crept up maybe from 16. You know, it, it the state issues the new medic, or maybe it's the federal government, I think actually issues what the Medicaid reimbursement level is. And we just, yeah. um, we acknowledge that we can support veterans as well. So I, if, if people are have been in the service, they can get a lot of funding from the Veterans Administration to come here. Yes. Great. Um, and we have good support for vets here. That's great. Wow. You do it all. <laughs> <laughs> so Marion, um, you've talked a little bit about what you enjoy. Are there are there particular things when you think of going as a participant to Project Independence that you particularly like and uh, having fun I with? Like, I like the food a lot. Ah. <laughs> People, the people are so nice. I think I've told you that before. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's good to be able to sit around and talk to people. It's more difficult now because we're all six feet away. So, right. You know, and we're wearing masks in the building. So it's not always easy for old people to hear. Right. But we do the best we can. But yeah. those are the things that I like. Socializing. Sure. The nice meal. The, the, the good people. Who are there for our interest. Uh -huh. I would recommend it to anyone. That's great. So um, that's wonderful. I wanted to know if this is what you wanted people to know about the program. I think you've covered that, but I I think I, what, one of the things that impresses me about what you've said today, Marion, is that your pride got in the way. And yes. once you figured that out, you were able to move ahead. So I don't know if you have any advice for people around that, but that seems to be, I bet that's a fairly common issue. It could be, I don't know. Uh, I think I'm rather unique in moving from staff to volunteer to participant. Yes. But there will be more of that in the future. Sure. Um, but it is a pride thing, I think. Yeah. And you, you, you just need to tell yourself, get over it. <laughs> and it worked for you. And you're really happy that you did, that you made that One change. One thing I would say is as I have aged, I realize that I'm comfortable in my own skin. Mm -hmm. I did not make that saying up. I read it somewhere, but <laughs> that's the truth. When you're young, you're trying to keep up with everyone else. Right. And when you finally can accept yourself for who you are, everything gets easier. Yeah. 
That's great. Words of wisdom. Thank you, Marion. Um, so Kristen, we need to start wrapping up now. Um, if you, we have just a couple minutes. If you want to talk about what you see the future of elderly services and what that looks like, and anything else you want people to know. Sure, I would just echo what Marion's saying is uh, it's difficult for people to want to come here, but it doesn't mean it won't work out. It's a little bit like the first day of school. So it's, and we help people adjust. I mean, we've had more than one 90 plus year old stand in our doorway saying, I'm not staying here. There's a bunch of old people here. <laughs> and um, as funny as that sounds to us, I think it speaks to kind of the fear of growing older. And we really try to combat that by creating a really loving, fun environment. So it's a transition to um, accept that this is a good place to be. So anyway, um, we're hoping that once we're through the pandemic, we can open our doors more broadly. We're serving only about 25% of the people that we used to serve bef mm -hmm. uh, before. Just to maintain distancing and masking, we're ultra cautious um, because the people who are dying are still in their 70s and 80s. It doesn't matter if they're vaccinated and booster, they're still at risk. Right. So um, we want to reopen uh, to our full capacity and continue to serve people um, through our adult day program. We want to develop our geriatric counseling service um, so that more people as they have the support they need kind of individually. Mm -hmm. And I guess another goal is just to make sure people know we are here. So thank yeah. you for, very much for shining a light on our program and sure. giving us a chance to talk about it. Yeah, well, we're so glad to have you here. And uh, thank you both, Kristen and Marianne, for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. So that's it for now. My guests today have been Kristen Bolden, Assistant Director at Elderly Services, and Marion Werner, who's a former employee, volunteer, and now a program participant at Elderly Services. Thanks to MCTV for producing this show. Thank you for watching, and we hope to see you next time.